Hello, hi, my name is Robin Scholl and I'm a uh, instructor at the Pacific Art League for over 30 years. Um, here's a painting I did a couple years ago of Florence and it's mostly what intrigued me was the sky. So I'm going to dispel a myth that you may have today about watercolor. Watercolor, a lot of people think you just put it down and then you can't do anything, you can't change it. So my technique and the way I teach my class, which is called Beginning Landscape Watercolor and is available online right now, is that you can. You can change the edges, you can fix mistakes, and you can really do a lot after the paint is dry. So let's get into it and I'll show you how, how that is done. Uh, first of all, with this painting, as you can see, um, I was fairly successful at taking a flat piece of paper and making the clouds look more rounded because I believe clouds are rounded shapes. And in order to make them rounded, you need to give them volume, usually at the bottom. By volume, I mean darkness or shading. So you see a lot, a lot of them have shading at the bottom and then where the light hits them, I've applied chalk, white chalk. And that's a great way to get soft images. There's a couple ways to uh, mediate your edges after the paint is dry, either by lifting out or adding chalk, which I'll show you how to do. So here we have a picture of my painting. Here we have the original photo that I used. Here is what I'm going to paint on. And here is of the finished product, but I've only done a little bit of the edges. So that's what I want to show you how to do. Take a wide wash brush and get the paper down, uh, the pa uh, water down on the paper. Of course, it's very important not to put too much down, but you need enough so that the paint will flow. So these clouds are drawn in here. I started with a line drawing. Now I'm going to add the outside color, which is going to be blue. Um, I, I've been using just four colors today. We've got French ultramarine, manganese, white gouache, cobalt blue, and permanent magenta. All that, while I was talking, my paper is drying a little bit. So I'm going to do a test and see if it's dry enough to go back in with the paint. That's a little bit of manganese and a little bit of cobalt, which are two colors I use a lot to mix together. For the blues, this is such a vibrant blue in the picture. So it's really pretty good. It's not blooming out too much and I feel like it's under control. So I'm going to go ahead with the color. I'm right up doing this this area up, up in there. I always use the side of my brush. Not adding a lot of water because remember the water is still down on the paper. I'm not concerned too much about the edges because that's what I'm going to be able to adjust later on. I do in my class, I, I take a whole lesson and do this demonstration and let people try it under my direction. People usually have a lot of fun. Okay, now we talked about volume. So now we're going, going to put the volume in, which is the under color. I'll, I'll use a deeper shade of blue for that. I'm mixing French Ultramarine and Permanent Magenta. Get the bottoms of those clouds. Okay, 
I've got some darks down there. Now I need to add the whites. I mean, the white should be blending right into the blue. I find it easier to let the white of the tops of the clouds blend into the blue when it's already there. This is white gouache, by the way. Okay, so at this point, I would once I got my lights and darks down, I would dry it with just a regular old hair dryer. And I'm gonna step over here now, because this one's already dry, and show you how to do some lifting with a couple tools. We need white pastel chalk and what's called a blender. This is just like a stump and it, and it helps with detail on blending your edges. So if I look at this picture, the sun is coming down on those clouds from the top right, I believe. You can see some really bright spots. So I've already done this edge here. I'm going to show you how to do an edge and get that sort of um, brightness up there. So this is called lifting, which we can do a lot. And this is what I was talking about earlier. How do we work on something that's already dry? I'm going in there with my very hard lifting brush. It's called a Taclon Scrubber. And there's a couple different brands. Different makers make different ones. Basically, we're just very carefully, without pressing too hard, lifting the paint off the paper. I'm working on those edges. So now that we've got them lifted out, I would dry it because you really shouldn't mix the chalk with the water too much and go in. I'm going to move down here because this is dry and put that chalk right on. And get a nice soft edge and then you can blend it out with the blender. And of course, there's many different um, instances. You can use this to correct mistakes or in a sky when you're trying to get that fluff, fluffy feeling that you see on a nice, bright, sunny day. Um, now, if you wanted to go back at this point with watercolor and put some different tints in, you certainly are able to do it um, at this point because this is, this is dry and you can do almost like you're starting all over again. I'm just gonna do a few more edges over here. It lifts out really nicely when it's perfectly dry. I use a lot of rags. And you can get a pretty nice effect. Pretty much make it say or do what you want. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope you sign up for my class or one of my colleagues' classes online. Uh, it uh, Once again, it's Beginning Watercolor, Beginning Landscape Watercolor with Robin Scholl.